Okay, a little birdie told me that some of you are having some trouble deciding when you should reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, so let's try it one more time. Remember, the logic of null hypothesis testing is that you have this underlying normal distribution a lot of the time, and anything that occurs in the center area occurs with high probability. How do we know that? Because along this y-axis, we have f of x, right? So this height here tells me that this occurs most frequently, right there in the middle. But this whole middle section is what we consider high probability. And then anything in the tails, assuming we're doing a two-tail test, occurs with low probability, right? So we have to decide what is considered extreme in hypothesis testing. And that means we have to figure out where to set these little bars. Do we set them at 0.05? Do we set them at 0.01? Do we set them at 0.001? And those values, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, those represent the area under this curve, so just beyond that boundary. So that's the logic of it. We've got to figure out what is considered extreme, but we set the value that's considered extreme. We decide if we want to use those areas of 0.05 or 0.01. Now the decision is going to be based on where we observe our test statistic. So if we find something that occurs in this critical region, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. But if we find something in this middle area that occurs with high probability, we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis usually states that whatever value we're looking for is somewhere in that middle region. So if we find something that occurs here in the extremes, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, there's a couple of different ways you could do this. Remember in the second step, I say you got to decide what your alpha level is and maybe the critical value, but when you're calculating your test statistic, you have to use either SPSS or you have results from SPSS or you're doing this by hand. We've done a number of problems by hand just to understand what's happening. And you could use a significance table, so a Z table or a T table or when we talk about ANOVA and an F table to determine what the critical value is. So let's first look at SPSS. Here's an example using SPSS. This is a single sample t-test. I know this because it says one sample test here and there's a T statistic associated with this and it's got a test value. This test value is what I'm comparing my sample mean to. So the question is, on a typical weekday during the school year, how many hours a day do you spend engaged in sleeping? So your actual number of hours sleeping. So our sample slept a little over six and a half hours a night with a standard deviation of two. That's a rather large standard deviation. Here's the standard error. The standard error for the mean. Where did that number come from? It came from 2.08 divided by the square root of 339. So that value is 0.11319. And that's actually going to be what's in the denominator of your t statistic. So SPSS has, always, has already provided the t value. It's given you the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, right? 339 minus 1, and it gives you p, the actual p value or significance, and that's 0.398. It says it's two-tailed. You don't have to do anything to this number. You don't have to adjust it in any way. This is the actual probability. It also provides the mean difference, so this is the difference between our sample mean and the test value, and it provides a confidence interval for this difference. And remember, for the null hypothesis in this test, we're saying under the null, we say that mu equals whatever the test value is, six and a half. So some studies say that the college students sleep on average about six and a half hours a night. And so I want to see if our sample is consistent with this. So the null would be that mu is equal to six and a half hours a night. And the alternate hypothesis is that, no, actually, our sample sleeps something other than six and a half hours a night. Since it's a two-tailed test, I'm not saying it's less than or greater than. I'm just saying it's something different from six and a half. And when I actually run the test statistic, I see that I get a t-value of 0.847 on 338 degrees of freedom, and the p is greater than 0.05. If I'm doing a 0.05 two-tailed test, then I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So I've found something now in that middle region of the distribution. Remember, if I have a little sketch here. So I found a value here in the central area. 
And I know this because the, the p-value is, is greater than the alpha level that I selected, 0.05. So the way that SPSS does this is that it's looking at area. It's saying, what is this particular value and the probability associated with that value? So getting this 6.5 or higher, or 6.5 and lower, it's not less than 0.05. So I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And I'm going to conclude that, in fact, our sample is not significantly different from the national average, if that's the, if that's the value we're comparing it to. Here's another option. We could do this by hand. So we could actually calculate the test statistic. So let's take the previous example. If we were setting it up, we would say t equals, and then in this case we would say that our sample mean was 6.59 minus what we would expect to see in the population, which was 6.5, divided by the standard error. Remember, that's that value that I worked out before. It's 0.11319. It would be the standard deviation for our sample divided by the square root of the sample size. And so when I put that in, I'm going to get 0.847. And I want to look on the t-table for 338 degrees of freedom. And you'll see that it doesn't go that high. So the values that we're going to use for a 0.05 two-tailed is plus or minus 1.96 as the t-values. So this represents this boundary where we would reject. In this case, we found the value 0.847, which would occur here, maybe roughly right here, because we have 0 right here in the center. So it is less than an absolute value. It's less than the critical t value. This is the critical t. So we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. We've arrived at this decision. Now if we had found a value that exceeded 1.96 in absolute value, then we would have rejected the null hypothesis and said that our sample was significantly different than the national average, which was 6.5. But in this case, it's not. And this is consistent with what we saw in SPSS. Now you don't need to do this both ways. Remember, there are two ways. One is to use SPSS, in which case you get the p through the significance. And the other is to do it by calculating the t and using the t table to find a critical value. If I had given you a situation where I say, on a particular test, you have scored. In the case of doing it by hand, I might say, you've scored a 97 out of 100. So your particular test score is high, right? 97 out of 100. Or, if I was using SPSS, I might say, you have scored in the top 3 percentile. So that's the area that's associated with it. That's the p-value. Two different ways. One is to look at area. So this is critical region right here. And that's what p is, and that's what SPSS is going to provide. And the other is to look at the value along the axis. And that's what the t value is if you're doing a t test, or the f value is if you're doing an f test. That number will be large if you're going to reject the null hypothesis, right? So you want a big number here if you're going to reject, because you're, you're away from 0 here, right? Now for the f distribution, it looks a little bit different. But for t and z, this works, where you the further away you are from 0, the more unlikely it is to find that particular value. In terms of area, however, you want this to be small, right? So you want t's and f's and z's to be large to reject. But you want the p-values to be small, because those are the percentiles. So that tells you the area that's associated with it. So if it occurs with less than 3% probability or 2% probability. So putting this all together, if you are in this critical region, you are going to reject the null hypothesis. Again, the p-value or significance is less than the alpha, or the critical value is less than the observed t-value that you might have calculated. And in this middle region, if the p is greater than alpha, so the significance is larger than the alpha you selected, you're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Or if you're doing this by hand, if the observed t is less than the critical t, We're talking about absolute values, then you are going to fail to reject. So two different ways. You don't need to do this both ways every single time. Just use one method. So if you are using, if you're calculating it 
by hand, you're going to use a t-table or an f-table or a z-table, depending on the test you're using. If you're using SPSS, you're going to pay attention to the p, the sig that's listed. Okay, hopefully that didn't confuse you anymore, but really the, the bottom line is two totally different ways to do it, but you arrive at the same decision and there's no need to do both. So p, small, t or z or f, you want those to be large, all will lead to rejecting the null hypothesis.